Hey, welcome back to 2DG. We've got another beer review for you. This is kind of a special one. <gasps> Wait. We got another beer review for you. Yes. Special. Special. What do we have? From Firestone Walker, which in and of itself isn't that special, but they're new to our area. Uh, this is, and it, correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly, uh, Sukaba, which is the 2008 vintage, so it's a barrel aged, if I understand, a bourbon barrel aged uh, barley wine. Clock's in at 12.5%. Um, I'll tell you here in a minute what the score was, but on uh, AB and Bev Rate Beer, it's a, listed as a top 50. Uh, rated and that kind of thing. Um, I first heard about this through Beer Geek Nation, which I think he's RIP at this point, last I checked, but that's where I heard about it first. So, you get serving temps and storage temps right on the bottom. And it says always keep refrigerated. Yeah, so they're saying it 55 it degrees. I feel like ours is going to be warmer than that. That's okay. Was um, it refrigerated when you bought it? No. Hmm. Of course not. It says always keep refrigerated. Well, yeah. Bought it in a. Cardboard box on the shelf, so <laughs> let's get it open though. I'm kind of excited for this, and it's been a while. Yeah, as I say, I haven't had a good barley wine in quite a bit. No doubt. All right, so get it going here. Nice bourbon color. Indeed, Put indeed. Head on there. Let me give you a little bit more here in a second. I just want to say it is aromatic. <laughs> it is, you know, already wafting. Actually, we probably could have taken that. Well, mine has a fatter bottom. <laughs> All right. So I made some tiny notes as we were pouring it, but uh, much darker in the glass here. Nice kind of uh, brown sugar, bourbon color. There's a real red in it. Yeah, it's nice reddish hue. Um, Definitely some stiction, which is, say, yeah. this beast is coming in at 12.5%, so should be. Head, obviously gone. Well, well I'm not going to say it should be because of the ABV, because it could have consumed all those sugars. Well, it's but it clearly this year, did. so I doubt it. But a lot Anything. of carbonation, it looks like. Let's give it a smell. Okay. <laughs> God, that's massive. But in a good way. This isn't helping me not want... To go to Dark Lord Day this year. <laughs> so for me, uh, lots of that kind of not burnt sugar but caramelized sugar smell. Uh, tons of cherry in this, uh, but also, and this is one of the first times I can actually say that it's very distinguishable. Uh, lots of coconut in this, in my opinion. Uh, vanilla in there as well. Yeah, not a ton of malt, but this kind of like. It's very boozy. Yeah, it is boozy, but like not punch you in the sinus boozy. No, and a, and a lot of them that are this boozy and have this aroma are the bourbon barrel aged uh, stouts, and they have that wet grainy finish too. This doesn't have the grainy part. It's like that smell without the graininess. <laughs> I'm excited. It? Yeah, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a nose clearer. <laughs> Not really. Wow. You're, it, it creeps back up through the sinuses, but it doesn't burn it like a horseradish, you know? Um, but holy crap. There's like a toffee. But then, that's as it's going back through your mouth. But when it's done, you get more of a sugary... The toffee kind of, but then all of a sudden that work, it's like roasted, but it's not a burnt sugar. You know what I mean? There's like so much going on, you can't even gather. It, it really stuff. is. I mean, the flavors on this are tremendously awesome. So, um, yeah, a little bit of bitterness right at the front, but you get that alcohol heat that runs kind of all the way through the jowls on each side. Um, you get a nice uh, caramelized sugar slash toffee note all the way through. The cherry is very, very prevalent, almost to an overwhelming type of thing or type of taste. 
the vanilla and coconut, um, more so through the, I don't say mid to back, not a ton on the front. Um, the booziness, like you said, creeps up at the end. Now, it's something that goes maybe a quarter or halfway to the sinuses, nothing that's going to full-fledged punch you. Super dry at the end. Uh, yeah, dry as shit. Um, it's that follow-through that's a star. Yeah, the, I mean, uh, after you've swallowed and everything, and you start exhaling and breathing some more, and the, it's lifting off your tongue, the residuals. Carbonation spot on. Man, that's good. Now, I got a 12-ounce bottle because it was the only thing they had. I don't know that I could drink, <laughs> in all honesty, maybe even a full one of these. It's... She's beastly. Yeah. Now, it's one of those where... Now, it's, it's from this year. I, I don't... Let's see if they have... Yeah. They bottled it. Yeah, wow, they even bottled it this year. So, uh, on January 13th of this year, which is very, very, very impressive. So when you have something, number one, that was brewed to be this high in ABV, but also aged in a bourbon barrel, I expect it to be super hot. That was one of the things I was kind of worried about. This one, while it is hot, it is not at all what you normally get. It works so well. Yeah, I mean, you come out of the barrel this young and and, and uh, be so balanced is pretty impressive. I mean, that's that's not something you usually get. It usually takes some time. I want to say I paid like 12 bucks for this or something like that. Something around there. Which isn't that bad. Now, I should have picked up more than one, and I may try to go back to where I got it to see if I can age these, because I think this would be awesome aged. Oh, God, yeah. But uh, my only complaint is they don't kind of list how long it was in the barrel. I'm going to go ahead and say that it was kind of just maybe a month, if that. But I honestly have no idea. And I don't think the temperature is messing with this at all. Yeah, I think it could be a little cooler. I oh, I'm fine with it. I think that cut down on the cherry a little bit. Um, man, just keeps delivering too. There's a almost like a. It's almost like a, and I hate cotton candy, but there's almost a cotton candy sugar residual, but it's slightly toasted, so maybe a little like a marshmallow that licked the flame or. I just ate a date not too long ago. I'm going to say if you took that date oh, yeah. and you put it in some like uh, vodka or something and then let it soak maybe for like an hour and then took it out and bit it, that's kind of what I would say. I wouldn't go cotton candy. I think that's a good comparison. Yeah. If you've never had a date, think brown sugar. Yeah. It's kind of very similar to that. It's delicious. But anywho, let's move on. We've given more than enough descriptors. Yeah, and while he's looking that up, all you guys going to Dark Lord Day this year, um, this is one that would work well there. I think I would be happy to get some of this if I were there. And if we can get this shit in Northeast Indiana, because they're out of, uh, God, Peso Robles, California. Or, that was Cali, yeah. Yeah, I know they're out of California, just in Nova City. If we can get it here, you can get it probably anywhere east or west of here. So. They only made 7,300 cases of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, act now. <laughs> All right. So, this isn't a barley wine style, nothing fancy or crazy. Uh, style, they give it 100. Overall, they give it 100, which you should have expected by the hint that I gave you earlier of it being a top 50 rated. They gave that all hundreds? Honeys. All the way across. Wow. Honeys. Because I'd definitely, on style, give it a 10. <laughs> you like what he tried Out to do? Out of 10. Man? <laughs> Even though, like, you probably could have guessed where he was. Um, I'll agree, 10. The only thing that I can complain about is it's verging on being medicinal to a, it's not to a bit. Now, not in the fact that it has a fake flavor, but in the fact that you can tell they used a ton of uh, toasted malts in this, and then the alcohol plays a factor. So Ooh, I kind of zap that time all the way up. <laughs> He's getting brave. He's trying to take bigger sips. No, but... He, he's right. It, it does verge on that a little yeah. bit. However, that sweetness swoops in at the right time. Yeah. That that roasty sweetness, like toasted toffee-ish, brown sugary, works. Yeah. Man, I've definitely had way worse. Now, this is well, uh, what's yeah. called a sipper, obviously. Like, if you don't know what that is, let's use some common sense here. But, um, that being said, uh, if you were going to have, like, a cigar or something like that, perfect. Perfect. My opinion. Uh, overall. Overall 10. God. I'm, I'm actually 
thinking about stopping on the way back and looking. Um, that's really good. This is me on DuPont. I'm not going there. Well, I mean, back in my town. Oh, well, good luck. Um, <laughs> sorry for that aside. Um, 10 as well. It's, it's really good. I wish it was a, a tad cooler, but uh, regardless. Um, now, if you're going to a, a beer share or a festival or whatever you want to call it, bring this for the people on the East Coast because I, I don't believe that it goes much past Indiana. I'm guessing it'll probably stop in Ohio unless they're one of those that'll like transplant something to like New York City or something like that. Uh, I'd have to check their, their website to see how far they actually go. But I Ohio. can't imagine that it's much past here. Ohio did change their law on the high ABV stuff, right? Yeah, which... I think so. Some news also, a Dogfish Head is finally getting into, it was either Arkansas or Alabama. If it's Alabama, I'm severely impressed because they're one of the most uh, limited as far as their beer styles and alcohol levels and stuff like that. Other than like Oklahoma, I think is super high too, or super restricted. But I, I want to say it was Arkansas, so, and I think they were another one of those kind of prohibition states that kind of do a, a bunch of dumb alcohol limitations yeah. as far as percentages, but... Um, yeah, so Ohio, <laughs> I, yeah, Oklahoma's bad. Um, I think Budweiser there is like at 3% or something like that. It's ridiculous, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I think uh, Prairie Artisan's out of, out of there. So like yeah, that. I don't know how that all worked out. Anywho, yes, uh, like I said, though, if you're sharing with people from the East Coast or you're going to the East Coast, bring this. I think it's a good kind of something you can get pretty regularly. And This is something I'd be proud to hand out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's a good beer. And it may not be hard to get where you're at, but it's a great beer. <laughs> Share. All right. So that was our hot take on Fire <laughs> Firestone Walker uh, Sukaba. I probably butchered that. Uh, sorry. Go get it. Yeah. Go get it if you can. Let us know what you think. If you like it, thumbs up. If you hate it, thumbs down. Screw you. Uh, comment down there if you want to leave some you know, little notes that you have. Otherwise, 2DG. See you later.